51-yard reverse play that struck gold in the third quarter. The Mountaineer defense shut down the Bearcats by forcing four turnovers to extend the winning streak to nine. On election week, WVU traveled to Giant Stadium to tackle Rutgers. Here it was the West Virginia defense that stepped in and squashed the surging Scarlet Knights. The Mountaineers picked off three Rutgers throws and forced a fumble to go with five sacks and a half dozen broken up passes. In fact, the defense lit up the scoreboard first when Daryl Whitmore picked off the first Scarlet Knight pass and scootered in for the touchdown. Offensively, it was business as usual. Harris hit Rembert on a long bomb for his seventh TD catch of the year. Under a plowed off right guard for a score, and Craig Taylor redefined the term second effort as he refused to be denied this touchdown in the third quarter. Tack on another Taylor TD in the fourth, and WVU flew home with a 35 to 25 win. Just 60 minutes separated West Virginia from perfection and they were not about to let Syracuse stand in the way. Tonight, the Mountaineers are 10-0. They need a win over Syracuse to seal up an undefeated season before they go on to the Fiesta Bowl to play Notre Dame. But I want to invite all of you, win or lose tonight, I know you're going to win, but either way, we're still very proud, and we still want you out there in Phoenix playing the Irish and Notre Dame. Right. The 14th-ranked Orangemen squeezed into a sold-out Mountaineer field on this cold and rainy night to determine who would be the Feast of the East in 1988. With a nationwide television audience looking on, the Feast roared, and its name was West Virginia. Craig Taylor blasted through on the first Mountaineer possession, and any Syracuse upset hopes were quickly dashed. The Orange battled back, stifling West Virginia defense came up with six turnovers on the night including four interceptions late in the first half Deron Ellis picked off a Syracuse pass and rumbled downfield to give WVU another crack at the goal line Craig Taylor blasted through for the score and the Mountaineers were up by 11 at the break in the third quarter Willie Edwards who scored in the first game of the year did it again in the last with a touchdown steal that shut the door on the Orangemen. Charlie Bauman added a three-point cushion with a fourth-quarter field goal, and Andre Johnson capped off the evening with a dive over the top to give the number four Mountaineers a 31-9 win and an undefeated season. And after the game, this family of 65,000 emotional West Virginians poured out its heart for a team that had reached its destiny and for a man whose dedication to excellence inspired an entire state. It was a touching tribute to the perfection of the 1988 West Virginia University Mountaineers. I've coached 30 years. In those 30 years, I've had a couple teams that have won nine games, a couple teams that have won eight games. I had a high school team once win 10 games, but no team that I've ever coached has been good enough and stayed on track long enough to win 11 football games. From a professional standpoint, this is just unheard of. When you think how many teams there are in America, and some years nobody goes undefeated, most years maybe one team or two, and it's happened here at West Virginia, first time in 96 years, it's a great accomplishment, one in which I'm extremely proud. As soon as the Mountaineer plane landed in Phoenix the day after Christmas, there was no doubt that this would be the experience of a lifetime. The crisp desert air surrounding the well-appointed West Virginia headquarters was delightful. The facility was centrally located to the WVU practice field where countless media members got a first-hand look at the best team in the East. During the day, it was all business as West Virginia sharpened a game plan dedicated to stopping the top-ranked Fighting Irish. But during the evening hours, both teams celebrated the rewards of perfect seasons and experienced the unequaled hospitality of the American Southwest. And as game day arrived, there was no doubt that this national championship was the hottest ticket in America. Thousands of Mountaineer fans had followed the team across the country with a loyal passion. This was it, the single greatest moment 
in the history of West Virginia football. Eugene Napoleon took the opening kickoff and moved upfield for a 19-yard return. Then the worst possible Mountaineer nightmare came true, as Major Harris suffered a shoulder injury on the game's third play. The option attack was crippled, with Major unable to run effectively, and despite his heroic effort, that turned the tide of the battle. But the Mountaineers never gave up as Harris hit Grantis Bell for a third quarter touchdown and Reggie Rembert scored another TD in the fourth period. But these Herculean efforts fell short as Notre Dame won the game and the national championship. Despite the loss of this one single game, this team accomplished more than any other in the history of West Virginia. They didn't just win a few football games. They inspired hundreds of thousands of West Virginians to believe in themselves. To believe that success is not a right, but a privilege granted only to those who understand that back-breaking sacrifice and single-minded dedication are the true mark of victory. You've taken us to the top of the mountain. Don't ever let anybody think for a moment that we're not proud. You've made us 10 foot tall, and we love you for it. Because I want you to understand, the coach and the football team is not a one-man gang. This is a joint effort by a lot of people, and I'm very, very fortunate. In closing, I'd just like to say, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. Let's do it again next year. Don Nealon, the 1988 season was the benchmark of an illustrious career. He was named National Coach of the Year by no less than four organizations, including the prestigious Kodak Award given by his peers in the American Football Coaches Association. And although he's appreciative of the recognition, he is the first to give credit to his outstanding coaching staff. These dedicated men called upon more than 150 years of college coaching experience to make this program a winner. In 1988, the All-American squads were filled with names from West Virginia. The Associated Press named 14 Mountaineers to its All-American teams. The AP also awarded All-East recognition to a phenomenal 24 West Virginia players, placing seven on the first team honor list. United Press International selected five Mountaineers to head its national team, while the Sporting News added nine West Virginia All-Americans to its record book. And the ECAC named seven Mountaineers to the first team of its All-East honor roll. Major Harris, voted most valuable player by his teammates for the second straight year, placed fifth in the Heisman Trophy balloting and was invited to New York City to take part in that hallowed ceremony. For the first time ever, West Virginia University was the unanimous choice to receive the Lambert Trophy, symbolic of the Eastern champions of college football. The 1988 season was a perfect gift, but it was not the end of an era. It was only the beginning of a glorious new chapter in the history of West Virginia football. During 1989, this team will put its unprecedented success behind it and again dedicate itself to revel in the glory of excellence. The 1988 West Virginia University highlights were presented by Key Centurion Bank Shares. A bond was formed in the early moments of autumn. The destiny of each mountaineer balanced in their grasp. These men went after perfection in search of ours. With all these men, we saw the dream. What we have accomplished and what we might achieve. And whatever it is you might have inside.
This has been a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation.